First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that is fighting the good fight of faith and truth and sincerity. Just want to get into a video about your job. So you got a job when you come into this truth. When the Lord, as the scripture said, you've been bought with a price. And with that price, you got a job. And um, so I just want to get into that. So I'm probably going to title this video, Your Job. You know, um, even though everybody is not a prophet, you got some people who are just believers. But even when you believe, that's an action word. Because if you ain't prophesying, then you at least trying to keep the law, statute, commandments to the best of your ability. So, John 21 and 15 so when they had dined, Yahweh said to Simon Peter, Simon's son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? He said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Yahweh said unto him, Feed my sheep. And that's your job. <laughs> Feed the sheep. And with in your job, you know, it's vexation of the, um, you know, spirit. It's talking to people who ain't going to get it, but you still got to tell them whether they want to hear or forbear. Ezekiel 3 and 17 said, warn my people from me. Okay. Told Ezekiel, I'm sending you into a, you know, a rebellious and stiff necked people. So your job when it comes to this truth, is vexation of the spirit, trials and tribulations and persecution for the word's sake, which is all a blessing because you've been bought with a price. When Yahweh Shah went on that cross and went through all that pain for the sins of all Israel, but the elect first, this is your reasonable service, which I'm going to get that scripture later in the lesson. So from there... It says, For I think that the Most High have sent forth, forth us the apostles last. And the word apostle just means sent. So he sent us out here last as it were appointed to death. For we were made a spectacle unto the world and to the angels and to man. Because when we out there making our body a living sacrifice, man, people is gazing upon you. You're a gazing stock, man. But it's beautiful because while the world looking down on you, they don't even understand that Lord willing that we are these men. That these going to be the people that <laughs> they're going to be looking up to very, very soon. It's especially in the kingdom of heaven when if we are those men, we're going to have a high status in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to have a low status in the kingdom of heaven. The only thing... That the two thirds got going for themselves is that when they do come into the kingdom, they're going to be over the other nations, but they're going to be lower than the elect. So they're gonna they're gonna remember all the things that they done, all the times that they scoff, all the abominable acts that they did, and they didn't want to repent. They're gonna have that memory in the kingdom, but the only thing they're gonna have going for themselves is that because you know the two thirds going to come through the loins of the elect. They're going to have a, you know, beautiful dad, rich dad, righteous dad. We all going to be righteous, you know, and that's the only thing I have to look forward to, man. You know, they still going to be good overall, but they're going to have that shame face in the kingdom, man. They're going to have that shame face in the kingdom. And if and, and a lot of people are so carnal and stupid that they actually think, oh, well, I'm going to be good regardless. Nah, before you be good, you're going to have to go through some torment. And 
only a carnal man would have that mindset. Cause I remember I was talking to a dude on the highways and byways, and he was like, well, from what I'm getting out of this, I'm going to be good regardless. And he said that's dangerous to tell people. And the thing is, is that, see, the Lord's in control. So if you take the word, because you got to understand, you got to preach the truth. So if you take the word and make it into something that you're trying to get over on, that's just your lot. That's just something that the Lord wants you to do. But I never, ever thought about, um, well, I, I'm going to make it anyway, so I'm just going to continue to be a nigga and have fun. I never had that thought. And I hope I never have that thought. You know? But, yes, all Israel going to be saved. That's what it say in Romans 11, 25, and 26. But don't you want to be the one that established the kingdom? Don't you want to be the one that's the, that as we say, the first bus? You don't want to miss that first bus, man. Why would you want to go through a gruesome death? Just to come back into the kingdom with a shame face. You already get embarrassed by certain things that you've probably done in the world. Why you want to be somewhere that you're supposed to enjoy yourself and have a shame face? But I'm talking too much about the situation. Let me get, continue with the scriptures. So we are fools for Hamashiach's sake, but ye are wise in Hamashiach. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. So you got to understand there go that vexation part. So when you out there telling a man, it don't matter if you're telling you a woman, you know, what you're about. You might even tell your family what you're about. They ain't going to receive it 99% of the time, man. This is a very small sanctuary, as I say in Ezekiel 11 and 7, 11 and 16. It's a small sanctuary that Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh is dealing with. So that means if you got way more people coming up against you, that's just more debating, more arguing, but the Lord said, talk not much with a fool when you perceive that he have no understanding. That's the best advice you could ever give a man of the Lord that's trying to do the best that he can according to what the Lord asks. You know? But this is your job. You was bought with a price. And that and um let's get to let me see, Romans. Say, for I say, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. Oh, shoot, it's two. But that's a good one. Matter of fact, I might have to put that in there then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Romans 12, 2 and 3. Hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. That's the main point that I want. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect of the will of the Most High. So when you out there making your body a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service, that's the least you can do. That's the least you can do. And as it's saying in verse two, you know, you put in you putting off the old man, putting on the new man. That's how you be be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the new mind is, OK, this is my job and. This is the only thing that I care about. Do that mean you don't have to go to work? No. Do that mean that you still, that, that, that you could just shit on your wife? No. It's a balance to everything, but this comes first. This is your first job. Okay? This is your main priority. This is the thing that's going to save you. All right? This is the thing that's going to save you. Of course, you got to be chosen from the foundation of the world. But guess what? The people that are chosen from the foundation of the world is going to be doing the things that the Most High ask of them. So that's our hope. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to the Most High continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And that, when you out there preaching, that's what you're doing. 
All right. When you make a video, that's what you're doing. Giving thanks to his name, continually giving praises to his name, man. That's all we got. This is our sacrifice. Continually. Through the fruit of our lips, man. The fruit of our lips and making our body a living sacrifice. That is the price that we've been bought with. So this is your job. All right. It's your job, and you better love it. Because if you don't love it, you will fall out. You got to have joy in this, man. And to be honest, I don't understand how you couldn't have joy in this. Because once, it, once you've been enlightened, you taste the goodness of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah's mercy. Then you should understand that you in a world that's about to be destroyed for your sake. He said he shortened the days for the elect's sake. And if he didn't do that, it would be no flesh upon earth saved, man. So why would you try to hold on to a sinking ship, man? It's over with. It's, it, it, it. I mean, this, this is what's hot. This is the only thing that matters. Everything else is secondary, man. And if you keep that in mind, matter of fact, that's, that's a beautiful thing. The water you have about you, have a shot. If you keep this first and everything secondary, secondary, you will not fail. And which, that's balance right there. So the Bible say, be not over-righteous nor over-wise while destroy of thyself. So if you was a person who like try to do, you know, 20 videos a day and go out there and preach three, four times a week, you will burn yourself out because out, this is a race. All right. This is a fight of faith. All right. It's the fight of faith, man. So you got to pace yourself, which that's balance. But that means that your wife, your family time, come second. Your job, come second. This come first, man. All right, so from there, I want to go to 1 Timothy. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in the word. And conversation and charity and spirit and faith and impurity. So that's what you do when you go out there. And some of us as young men. So if a lot of, uh, uh, you know, an older person, you know, look at you like, oh, what this little young buck got, got to tell me? Or it might be a person that's your age looking at you like, oh, I know this dude, man. We used to run the streets together. We used to do this and that together. All right? But don't let him, don't let a man despise you in your youth. Don't let a man despise you in this truth. Period. Because you are the authority. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai put his word in you. And can't no man judge you as it say in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15. Matter of fact, let's get that. Let's get that. So it said, but the natural man receiving not the things of the spirit of the most high, for they are foolishness. Unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So this is still going back to your job. So this is the people that you got to deal with. You're spiritual. They're not. They can't receive it. You already received it, but you still got to tell them anyway for their blood won't be on your hand. OK. But he that is spiritual judge of all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Only person that could judge you. Is another brother, man. Because if you going off, you're supposed to get rebuked by a brother. Okay? He that is spiritual. Your brother is spiritual. A man of the world can't tell you anything. Don't know the Lord's name. Believe on white Jesus. Probably Allah. Science. Don't know nothing about the word. He know John 3.16. That's it. He can't tell you nothing. But, this, like I said, this is your job. This is your job. I love my job, man. And I just and I and I pray every day that he give me the experience of endurance for I can endure to the end. He said those who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So what's that? Uh, well, Sirach 42 and 8. So it said, be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish. And the extreme age that contendeth with those that are young. That's us. 
Thus shalt thou be truly learned and approve all men of living. This is your job. So it said, be not ashamed to inform the unwise and foolish in the extreme age. And what do it say about the extreme age? You can't put new wine in old wine bottles because the new wine will burst it, man. They stuck in their own ways. Talking to an older man, whoo, man, that, that's a waste of time. You better off dealing with the youth. All right, because they haven't been indoctrinized by this world, you know, by this Babylon, the great Western philosophies, man. So this is your job, man. This is the only thing that ever. And, and I'm, I'm speaking for myself first, but I believe I could speak for other brothers, too. This is the only thing that ever made sense to me, man. Only thing that ever made sense to me. So it's like, oh, I'm going to end it on this. I'm going to end it on this. One of my favorite scriptures. I, wanted, I, I wish I could bring it out every video. I think it's 6 and 68. But just to make sure, I'm going to go through the whole chapter. Matter of fact, I'm just going to start from 65. Now, uh... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read through this fast. So, this is this is this is your job, and you should love your job because if you really know the truth, then you know that you have salvation to look forward to, and the place that you're dwelling in right now is going to be destroyed. And Lord willing, if you're doing the work and you believe in the Most High, He's going to deliver you. So it's it, I don't understand how you couldn't love your job. Don't matter what comes with the job. You go work for Esau, bust your ass. Don't like that job. But the reason that you go, because you got bills to pay, you got to take care of yourself. Well, this is the only thing that's going to give you real life. All right. So anyway, John 6 and 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And who is the word? Yahweh Shai, man. And, and this word is called the comforter, which he sent. And with the comforter, we understand all things. So if you understand all things, then guess what? How can you draw back and go back into the world? This world don't offer you nothing but a little quick fix of the flesh just to be destroyed. 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahweh Shah knew from the beginning who they were that not believe not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, I said unto you that no man could come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. See, because he was saying deep. He was saying deep sayings. And only people that can receive the deep sayings is the one that the Lord is giving. As we just read in 65, can't no man come to the son unless the father draw him to the son. All right. So 66 again. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Yahweh Shai unto the twelve, will you also go away? And this is my favorite scripture right here. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. This world don't have that. This world can't promise you that. This world is going to be destroyed. Your enemy is ruling over you. Okay. And all he all he know is death. All right. He don't treat you fairly. He is your enemy, man. But with this word, we are free. As the scriptures say in John 8, 32. You should know the truth and the truth should make you free. Are we physically free? No, but we're spiritually free. And which is going to lead to physically being free when Yahweh shall come back and save the day. So hopefully this video is edifying. This is your job. Love it. Embrace it. And pray for endurance. Shalom.